I must say that probably the easiest thing you can do is playing as fascist UK. And I mean easiest in like the game in total. You, sure, you could probably have it easier say playing as Soviet Union or United States. But playing as the UK fascist, I didn't know this going forward because I never played UK. So it wasn't really in my mind and I did this whole uh, thing where you could vote on or say whichever path I should go on and everything like that. You just leave it open, out in the open. But still, UK going as fascist seems to be the easiest way possible to, to victory. Because France just falls, you take Paris, France falls automatically. They just collapse as a house of cards. You just kind of blow on it and you get the entire country. And then Germany most likely at that point is entangled in a war with the Soviet Union. So you can beat Germany in an afternoon. Just basically taking everything in the country because it's undefended. And Italy is a pushover, all the remaining Axis miners and everything like that is also a pushover when Germany is over. And the Soviet Union is surprisingly weak. And then suddenly you own half the world, as you can see here. So I think, you know, while this could really just be called quits right now, we have won the entire world. I think it's value still in taking the rest of China and defeating Japan at the very least. And maybe, depending on how, how difficult it will turn out to be, or it's not really difficult, it's more tedious to invade the United States. Because the United States is very powerful. They have a lot of divisions, a lot of divisions, a lot of airplanes, a lot of everything basically. And we can compare here, we, we have a fair amount of airplanes, but they still have a massive, huge amount of airplanes. And we, uh, well, we have a lot of airplanes in, like Spitfires, we have a ton of Spitfires. But still, that's just a lot of things for, for them. And we're looking here, we have our infantry equipment that is doing very well. We have a support equipment, done very well. We have our Spitfires, we can go for Spitefuls. In fact, we can create a variant of the of the spiteful, perhaps increasing reliability a little bit. Engine range is always good, and weapons. Let's see if level three weapons, level two range. Sure, we could we could make it better than this, but no point. And then we can switch out all our Spitfires for for spitefuls. Mark one. Let's see where else are we producing these Spitfires? There we are. And those will go to spiteful. Close air support 2. We don't have a close air support 3. No, I haven't fixed that yet. Medium tank 2. Let's go for the comets. Might as well. And then uh, we should probably upgrade medium self-propelled artillery 3. And medium tank destroyer we have level 3 of, so we can go for that. It's unfortunate though that it's just medium tank destroyer version 3. Okay, fine. And here we have another Spitfire. So we can upgrade that. And Advanced Artillery is doing well. How much, how, what are we lacking in? We are only lacking in Mechanized. Alright, we're we lacking in Mechanized. And we are producing Mechanized. So maybe we should add another line of Mechanized. Uh, let's see here. It's over here. There we go. And add maybe half factory. Half full factory. Seems reasonable. And we have a ton of factories. Just a million factories left. So, what to do with a million factories? Well, if we're going to fight Japan, we should probably have some sort of naval dominance. We can achieve that pretty easily, most likely, when we're taking ports around here, when we're taking back... Well, we do have Hong Kong, though it's currently under ownership of China, and I'm not a fan of that. So we need to invade China from behind, and that should probably be pretty easy to do. Is this Norway? What are Norwegian troops doing over here? Oh yeah, they are our allies. They are our allies, so we need to basically defeat Sweden or make Sweden join us somehow. Finland is the same. We gonna need to clean up Europe. There needs to be no independence in the world. What the hell? So, first of all, I think we will dispatch some troops to handle the Turkish insurrection that is going on around here. So we'll do something like this, and then maybe these will have the special mission of taking the Izmir. So they can go around here and do... Wait, they never got that mission, huh? All right then, I will personally give them that. And there's 13 divisions over there. Excellent, 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 excellent. And then what to do with the rest? Well, we have Bernard Montgomery with all his million men. And they could... Well, they could do a lot of things. 
should probably have them at Xinjiang and this whole thing. And maybe we need to take Siam as well, considering they demanded a lot of territory from Russia. And we, well, let's just say we don't appreciate stuff like that. So let's go for Xinjiang border around here. Wait, how long will this border be? Well, only, only that bit. 85 divisions is a bit, is a bit of a lot of things over there. And uh, Army 5 under Alexander, Harold Alexander. And he is close to getting, wait, he's not really close to getting anything, but offensive doctrine at least. He will go to Romania. So we will have the Indians as far away as India, of India as we can really at the current state. Because we need the more advanced troops under Bernard Montgomery at Xinjiang border. So yeah, this war has been going really well. Uh, Turkey has capitulated. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So finally we got rid of Turkey. So we didn't really need to go there anyway. Or, well, we kind of do because then suddenly... I suppose Italy decided that they have one division left. And yeah, we had this whole thing. Which I've almost completely forgot about. So maybe we can finally, once and for all, defeat Giovanni Messe. Is it Messe? Yeah, it was actually Messe. And we have some technology to do. And we could probably just go for that version. Well, actually it was done when I spoke of, speaking of the devil. The devil kind of delivers. Okay, let's go for nuclear reactor then. We're late to that party. Oh, actually we're not. I thought we were in 1945 for some reason. We were only at 1943. Time has been moving really fast. So let's go for advanced computing machine, which will give us some nice boost there. And I think we are almost done with most of these things. Unfortunately, we don't get the secret weapons thing, which would be amazingly helpful. That's amazingly helpful. Uh, let's see here then. We can embargo the USSR. A bit late to the party. A bit late. A bit late. Maybe no destroy models. We don't... Well, sure, why not? It's not like we have anything better to do with, with that stuff. Maybe we could focus it on getting, you know, aircraft designers and, you know, a chief of navy and chief of staff. And wait, we do have a chief of staff. So we don't need that. Or chief of army. Military high command. That could also be useful. But it's not like we're lacking. It's not like we have any direct need of, of more stuff like that. And we do have new... This is not new fun, but Labrador. And we could strengthen a bit more. We do have a lot of things that we need to repair due to partisanship. So maybe we shouldn't go for partisans. Can we... Like, resistance. Is it? Resistance map mode. We have a lot of resistance in Germany. A lot of resistance in Germany. So they are destroying things everywhere, basically. But that will be solved by the time we defeat Japan. And Japan we will defeat. We just need to get some Air Force there when the time comes. And we have Air, air Force to, to deal that with. So, Xinjiang. I apologize for, for this, but I need to declare war on you. Wait, is this the People's Republic of China? Oh, I didn't know that it still existed. Seemingly only does in passing. Considering they have no divisions, but their territory has been reacquired by... The People's Republic of China, no, wait, by, by Republic of China. Yeah, Republic of China. Okay, so what fleet should we use against... I think this one. This one is beautiful, strong and wonderful in every, every way, really. We don't have the best leaders. We have Andrew Cunningham here. He would be amazing for leading this fleet. So I think I will have to reassign him. And we will send him to Singapore, basically. Where is Singapore? There you go, and that actually has capacity for it. So Singapore, and then he will be tasked with patrolling the East China Sea, the Yellow, Yellow Sea, Jello, and Sea of Japan to control all of that. Which should be working out pretty well, I think, hopefully. Uh, let's go with more factories, or we maybe more stuff here. Uh, what do we need? Strategic bomber, maybe. What are our resources? We pretty much have everything we need in resources. So we're exporting 246 and importing 240. That seems really unnecessary. Like really unnecessary to import that much and basically just that is from exporting. So what is our trade when it comes to here? export focus? 
Yeah, that gives a nice research time bonus. Free trade would be even better, but that would be a lot of resources to market. Uh, would it really be that bad to lower it to limited exports? Because that would be a lot more resources available to us. Research speed would lower. Construction speed as well. Hmm. Okay, maybe we can't do that. Current ruling party is democratic. Oh. Okay. Fine. Oh, we could we could do that if we want to. It's an option. It's an option that we can rely upon. In the worst case scenario. Otherwise, we are we're just building stuff and we are increasing our convoys here, which we had problems with before. And now Xinjiang will fall. Declare war on Xinjiang, and there we go. And uh, they got a call into... Wait, who did they join? They joined the Axis. Well, damn it, Xinjiang. God damn it. And basically everything that needs to be done is just take Xinjiang. And then we'll be ready to strike against China. And when we're taking China, we can just go for Japan. And uh, be done with it. Mongolia is probably a good stepping stone along the way. I'm surprised that we don't need to justify war against them. I suppose the, they are left in the common turn, but we did get peace, a peace conference when we defeated Soviet Union, so maybe they just got got out of it without any any issue. And uh, the Indian army is approaching ready status here against Romania. Hopefully it, they will need to prove their mettle against Romania. It could be problematic for them. I mean, the Indian army is not at its best, let's just say. Maybe we should add more Spiteful. How many Spiteful will be produced each day? And they will all go to modernizing the current ones, so they won't really add to the supply. Uh, producing almost 9 a day, which is pretty good. I must admit, that is pretty good. But is it good enough? That's the question. And we have Army 2. That is split to concerning here. And let's just annihilate the last... Italian troops, and they have returned to Izmir. Again, they have returned to Izmir. They are stuck on these goddamn islands. And some of them belong to Germany even at this point. And here we have Crete. So we kind of need to eliminate them as well. Or, wait, aren't they at peace now with us? Aren't they at peace with us? Yeah, they are. We even have a non-aggression pact. I missed that. Oh well. No problem, really. No problem at all. And here we have a German thing. Interesting. Very interesting. So we need to take this out as well. This is basically Germany's HQ at this point. So we will have a small thing over here. It won't really matter. And just take the Balearic Islands. Done. And go as soon as possible. Should take only five days. We should already have naval superiority and everything needed there. So that shouldn't take any time at all. And now we take Izmir. And can we also take these islands now, please? To finally end the Italians in in Turkey. Would not that not be a blessing? Yes, it would. Um, convoy escorts. Submarine operations. Floating fortress. That's that sounds cool. Floating fortress is cool and sounds cool. There we go. Now we should finally have the situation under control here. And who, who does this belong to? I wonder. Well, control the British Empire. Well, that's, that, that's us. So why is there a question mark there with a naval base? Shouldn't we know about it? Well, or maybe we just own this. Oh, it's Italian, I think, maybe. Or Republican Spain controls one bit. So they probably control that, that bit, which is fine. Which is fine, but we should still take it. We should still take it. Uh, maybe we should need to go over here. And here's our... Our carriers. Proud carriers with a lot of airplanes on them. With a lot, a lot of airplanes. Okay. We only have... Oh wait, we don't have some naval superiority there? I thought we did. I was absolutely certain that we did. Alright then. Then if we don't have it... Then we need to go into into the sea and rearrange things. Because I don't think the Mediterranean fleet needs to be over here. And I think that was the one losing its commander. 
So we need to send another one. Algernon Villas. Ah, there we go. Now you should have the ability to perform your mission. Yes, indeed I do. Wonderful, wonderful news. I'm pretty sure I want to send another, another expeditionary force. I'm impressed with Xinjiang. They have a lot of troops for how small their country is. A lot of troops. How many people live in Xinjiang anyway? I don't know. I don't even know. But they do have some nice stuff over here. Ideological fanaticism. They're communist and joined the Axis. Just like Greece was fascist and joined the, com the communists. Things just don't always make sense. There we go, the Indian army is ready. So we can draw an offensive line to reach the coast, basically take the entire country. And uh, state, you know, this, we need... We, we need a, a reason to attack them, I suppose. I don't know, even know why you need that with fascist government, can't you just declare war just outright? Because it's not like you're that limited anyway. Oh, is China getting this? Uh, it's because they have foreign claim, isn't it? Well, then we need to defeat China. Oh man, oh man. They would join our faction if they weren't in their own faction. I suppose that's flattering, maybe. But I'm not a fan of helping them, especially when they held my own territory. That should be illegal. They sh like, you should be able to demand a war immediately, just by stuff, shit like this. Hong Kong is mine, and yet they own it. I can't get it back anyway. I don't think so. Maybe I should send back my troops and try to get it back. Okay, everyone. Just go back to Hong Kong, see if you can retake it, if you stand there. And just demolish this front line. One way or another, I need to return these troops to my territory. Well, I actually have Laos here. That could be a nice place to start out with. And now my fleet is ready, so I will give them the mission for search and destroy in these areas that I gave previously. My wishes to patrol just so we can launch operations against Japan at the comfort of our own home more or less so not even when I have troops in Hong Kong does Hong Kong flip over to my rule and this territory goes to China anyway what kind of wicked logic is that I'm not a fan also three days away to finish off Romania and then we only have Portugal and the damn Nordics to finish off as well we do have already here some eight more divisions ready to be deployed wherever I wish them to be, well, deployed. So I could probably make use of them. I should probably make use of, of Purple Army here. Purple Army Group is ready for mission. Alan Brook is hungering for success. So where, Alan Brook, will you go? Maybe you should defeat South Africa. Is South Africa something you could do? Or should I send you all the way up to the north to defeat Finland? Let's go for Finland. There we go, Romania is now finished. As a free country, it will not exist after this day. It will not exist. So, get started. Well, they are doing pretty well so far. Some successes to be seen. Wonderful news, wonderful news. Yeah, good battles. To be fair, I am, you know, having a lot more troops than they do. Or more divisions. Though my divisions are not my own. And as such, not as powerful as my own stuff could have been. Venezuela, ever the loyal champion of our cause. Always sending more troops and men and stuff ready to help out. Um, do I need any more... Well, I do have 381 things ready here. I, I should be able to repair a lot of stuff. But look at this amount of shit. This is just due to the amount of partisans. Amount of partisans. When Central Europe will fall onto my territory, then we will see no, nothing like that at all. I'm just wondering here. Could I ferry over more troops to Vietnam and use that as a point of escape? Or point of attack, so I could maybe take over some territory and go from there. But I will first and foremost go and transport all the troops here back to Laos 
and then uh, form a front against China.